Open up. Here's your cookie. Finally. Thank you. If you had come, I'd starve to death. Nobody in cares what I have to say at all. Unbelievable. But why? Fancy island, isn't it? A couple more half-naked babes on the beach would be great, but apart from that, it's a real holiday paradise here. What's it like living here and all? A paradise? This island? What are you talking about? It's an intellectual wasteland here. Or have you seen any libraries or colleagues? All there is is this Gomorrah. What I've heard from the guests here, unbelievable. And don't even get me started on Captain Nero. Besides, it's terribly cold here. My see, my conductors are growing numb. Hey, how about a little more tolerance? You could at least pretend. Tolerance? And who is tolerating highly gifted life forms positively thirsting for education and intellectual challenges? You? Given my intelligence, I should play a prominent role in this island's government. But instead, I'm just being ignored. It's great you're not smug about your intelligence or anything. You're cold? It's at least 28 degrees Celsius here. Does it matter what the temperature is in here? I'm cold. Not that anybody takes me seriously around here. Hey, Polly, I bet you've got a good idea about how to fool that speech recognition device stuck on the inventor's hut store, don't you? Well, it doesn't surprise me that being of such simple intelligence is able to cope with that mechanism. That's, that's enough. Just you wait, you flying garbage can. But since you gave me a cookie, I'll grab your little leeway. I'll open the door for you, but only on one condition. From now on, you will spare me with your brainless babble. Okay, and now get the curtain ready for Polly. Best voice imitator this side of the equator. Please identify yourself. I'm your lord and master. Open up for me. Unidentified. Rap. Please identify yourself. Edward Peach. Voice identified. Please enter, Dr. Peach. Wow, a flying tape recorder. It's amazing what's out there. <laughs> that remark was considerably below me. And now I return to my studies on the middle level of bra conversations. So please excuse me. What do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? I... Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good at all. Ah, the aliens are coming! Hell's bells, what's this nonsense? No, not the catalyst fluid. Oops. There's no way I'm missing out on this fun. A book on voodoo? What nonsense! Hmm, let's see. Revival the easy way. The most modern methods of zombie creation without chicken blood. To bring the recently deceased back into the realm of the living, using the latest methods of modern voodoo magic, Please adhere to the following simple steps. You will first need a voodoo doll. You can learn the art of sewing voodoo dolls in our wonderful voodoo weekend workshop. Or mail order. Pick from our broad range of superior quality merchandise. It's got the best juju on the market. Then the voodoo doll has to be personalized. If you would like tips for this subject, 
please call our competent and helpful specialists on 555-VOODOO. Please put the voodoo needles into the most important chakra points in heart, head, left arm, and left leg. You can mail order special stainless voodoo needles from our broad line of merchandise. We've every quality for every price range. Energize the voodoo doll through the needles by applying power surges in the correct order. Heart activates general vital functions. Breathe life into the deceased with a power surge. Important, the reasoning functions should be prepared first, otherwise the deceased will be reanimated as a brain-dead zombie. Head activates the reasoning functions of a corpse. Warning, if arms and legs are not prepared beforehand, they will remain numb forever. Arm activates the grasping function of the hands. Careful, only works if the legs are activated first. Leg activates the walking capabilities of legs and feet. What the? Those aren't drawers. Those are turn switches on some weird device that looks like a dresser. So this is where that inventor hit his last penny. I bet he won't notice. I only loot the corpses of people I killed myself. Alex would be proud. I'm carrying a clean hanky with me. Nip snap, and the beard is off. That should disarm the voodoo doll. Voodoo magic is only good for scaring little girls. For example, if I take this needle here and... Ouch! There, that almost looks like a tiny lab coat. I hereby name you Dr. Peach. The voodoo doll still needs some parts before it's ready to rock and roll. And I'm not talking about silicone implants. I hate needles, but if I absolutely have to, And now I, Simon the Great, will revive a human being with the help of this voodoo doll. Please stay tuned for further details. Now we'll attach the four clamps to the correct corresponding needles, turn on the power, and we should see a happy end in just a few moments, ladies and gentlemen. There, let's see if I can light his lamps. Oh, ouch! Hell's bells, what was that? Some alien skins came and fired wildly in all directions. Then you were struck by a bolt of lightning. Ah, uh, I remember. Well, it seems I was lucky, doesn't it? And my sciatic pain is gone. Amazing. Seems like an electric discharge just like that can do wonders for your health. Well, yes, but maybe it's because you're dead. What? That's... that's... Are you trying to insult me, landlubber? Just look at you. The aliens killed you. But I, Simon the Mighty Sorcerer, revived you using this voodoo doll. That, that means... 
That means I'm one of the... of the undead? A zombie? That's... that's... I... 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 Ha 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 ha! Bullocks! That's fantastic! No more need for sleep, no more hunger, and my back pain's gone as well. Finally, I can fully concentrate on my research. I can't think of anything better that could have happened to me. Well, uh, it's great you're so happy about it. Boy, I owe you a favor. At long last, somebody who's able to recognize my abilities. Who are you anyway? My name is Dr. Edward Peach. I'm an engineer and inventor, and this is my laboratory, as you can see. Originally, I'd signed on as ship's engineer on the Black Pear, and after it was marooned, I built my lab here. What kind of stuff do you invent? I repair and invent everything that's needed. Aside from that, I like to occupy myself with space travel. But my real area of expertise is the development of artificial intelligence that really works. Ah, oh, yes. Just remind me what that's supposed to be again. Well, artificial beings need intelligence to be able to act like real living beings. Just think of pathfinding problems. I can't even remember how many of my less successful creations I lost because they chose the direct way over the cliffs. Hmm, I used to have problems with pathfinding too. Why are you stranded here? Okay, I guess you'll want to hear the short version. Well, it was a rainy night, and helmsman Larry Letslip was on duty on the bridge. I was in the captain's cabin at the time, and had just repaired the heating. Are you sure that's the short version? Please don't interrupt me, boy, otherwise it'll take even longer. So, Captain Narrow was sitting in front of his mirror and painting his face, as usual. Suddenly, a great wave hit the ship, which then caused us to rise up out of the water, making Captain Narrow smear lipstick right across his face. The captain got mad and muttered something like, How can he go across a bump while I'm applying my makeup? Then he rushed out onto the bridge deck. A moment later, I heard the helmsman scream something about banshees and hobgoblins. That sounds terrible. I said don't interrupt me. Anyway, there was a stamping to be heard on the deck, and then a splash in the water. Larry Letslip must have gone overboard. When I arrived on the deck, there was only a completely confused Captain Narrow. He was just standing there in his diaphanous dress, the red lipstick all over his face. That dimly lit scene appeared spooky and downright unreal. And Captain Narrow never spoke again about what really happened that stormy night. And then, what happened? Well, a storm came on. Captain Narrow fought to keep the ship on course. Larry might have succeeded at that, but as it was, a wave then hit us and smashed us right up against a reef, tearing a great hole in the ship's hull. We would have inevitably drowned if... If what? If not another wave hadn't then thrown us straight onto the shore of this island. Well, this is the end of the short version of this tale. The detailed edition will be found stocked in all good bookshops as soon as I've located a publisher for it. Can you tell me anything about that metal parrot Polly? Ah, yes. Polly. That bird's one of my first prototypes. While its artificial intelligence doesn't work properly, its speech processor is fully functional. Unfortunately, that creature resists all debugging efforts. Well, maybe I can find a can opener somewhere. Why don't you repair the ship and leave the island? What for? Here I can carry out my research in peace. All I need I stocked in the storage room of the Black Pear, and I can find the rest on this island. Apart from that, Captain Narrow doesn't appear to be too keen to put out to sea anymore. He's even become quite afraid of water. I've got a problem with this harpoon. Captain Narrow's stuck in the crow's nest, and the ladder's broken. I'm trying to shoot a rope up there using this harpoon, but I'm not able to aim with enough accuracy. Can you invent something to help with that? Well, stuff like that is really simple, and way below my intelligence capacity. But since it's you, give me that harpoon. 
There, I fitted the harpoon with a scope, so now you should be able to aim better and hit your target. Just be careful you don't hit Captain Narrow. He may be a little strange, but most of the time he's a fine... Uh, chap. I'll be going. Watch out! Duck! Finally, I've got some solid ground under my feet again. Oh, did you get hurt? Now look at that. My clothes are ruined. I could have saved myself the trouble of ironing them. Couldn't you find a more comfortable way down than this stupid rope? Oh, come on. I saved you. Don't overact now. I'll retire to my cabin now and fix my clothes and hairdo. Nobody should be seen like this. We'll see each other later. In my cabin, perhaps? Geez, I'm not that desperate. Good idea. That globe half makes a perfect bowl. Yuck. Yuck. I completely squashed these strange cherries. There are weird green beans in them. In you go. That smells even worse than that old can of ravioli Alex found under my bed the other day. It fills me with a deep, dark satisfaction to stink out Red Riding Hood's hut. Too bad I don't have any stench bombs left. One of those would add just the right amount of serious reek. Yeah, I'm taking the beans out with my bare hands. That's no problem for a real man. Okay, it's done. Now what? There, that should be enough. There, the stuff's in the jar. Not that I'd want to drink it. There, now it's water tanks full. A delightful coffee experience at the press of just one button.